Hello, I'm Scott, and I'm going to be demonstrating the frequency domain filtering portion of the Pure Data patch that I used to make my last video. This has actually been cleaned up quite a lot compared to the original version of the patch uh, in order to make it more usable and understandable, and it's kind of just all around better. As for the rest of the patch, I know some people have been interested in that, but that's going to take a lot of work to clean up, um, and so I might do that later. So here's the patch. The sound source is in the sub-patch. There are ten different oscillators with pitches corresponding to the harmonic series, specifically harmonics 9 to 17. The bass notes here, 50 hertz, and a sub-octave at 25 hertz, those are actually the 16th harmonic. Each note consists of three sawtooth oscillators with random pitch modulation, that's this B mod thing, and each note has random amplitude modulation, and those are all just summed together to a single output. You can change the rate of the amplitude modulation here. Uh, the raw oscillators sound like this. It takes a moment for the um, random modulator speed to update. But that's what it sounds like with the faster amplitude modulation. The um, pitch modulation, if you set it to zero, um, like many just intonation or harmonic series based scales, it sounds a little boring, kind of a buzzy sound, but you can increase that. This is in semitones. So that's 10 cents. Um, I added a straight um, mix of the uh, oscillators through a low-pass filter and reverb. Uh, the reason is that the frequency domain filtering often kind of cuts out a lot of the low frequencies, and so to give some impression of the fundamental frequencies, I made sort of a background drone here. The um, frequency domain filter part itself sounds like this. And the filter is here. If you want to look at what it's doing, there's two channels and there's correspondingly two different tables. You can adjust these so it looks nicer. So it's a basically a time varying function with a number of different peaks and you can um, with these parameters adjust how that works. Now the basic thing here, this is um, an overlap add with an overlap factor of 4. The window function is here, that's the square root of a Han window, basically a sine from 0 to pi radians. Um, and basically anytime you're doing any sort of frequency domain filtering, especially non-linear or time-varying filtering, this is the approach that you want to use. Uh, you could probably read about that somewhere if you're interested. Now you might notice that there's more sort of activity on this side of the spectrum and less over here, and that's because I warped the frequencies. The um, bins of an FFT are spaced linearly in frequency, but for a filter or something like that you want it to be uh, spaced according to octaves. So you can look at that 
thing here. That's how I warped it. I made this function. Um, I want to point out also that this is a 4096 point FFT, but I'm displaying only bins uh, 0 through 2048. The higher bins correspond to negative frequencies, which are irrelevant if you were dealing with real signals. Initially, I thought that this should be um, symmetric, that both halves of these spectrum, that both halves of the spectrum should be a, a mirror. Uh, if you're doing a, an FFT of a real signal, then they're mirrored, and the upper half that corresponds to negative frequencies, that's um, identical, but it's a complex conjugate. And I thought that if they don't match, then you're going to have a superimposed set of peaks corresponding to these negative frequencies. Um, but it turns out that this this real inverse FFT thing actually just completely ignores that upper half of the spectrum, and so it doesn't really matter if they're symmetric. It doesn't actually matter what those bands are at all. So, basically what I'm doing here is uh, I'm making a sort of function from this this warped uh, function here. This is basically a line, but it's warped so that um, it's line it's it corresponds to octaves rather than hertz. And I'm messing with this so that it has a number of different peaks. And there are some parameters that you can play with in the main patch that kind of illustrate that. I'm going to turn that reverb back on. So, if I make it a little bit simpler here, you can kind of see what's happening. Um, these scale parameters control the number of peaks. So you can increase this and have an enormous number of peaks. Or you can make it a very small number. And this modulator, the scale modulator, uh, continuously varies between the low and the high setting. And it's varying kind of very slowly. Uh, now this is actually the same for both channels because I figured that you want that quality to be similar between each channel. <clears throat> now, in addition to that, there's also this offset which kind of acts as a filter cutoff. That's independent for each channel. And so that's basically shifting this thing left and right and kind of randomly modulating that over time. I also added this warp parameter that it adds a um, sort of sinusoidal distortion. That's this part. Um, and so that makes a kind of more interesting sounding and a kind of well you can you can see the effect without that I thought it was a little boring um, one thing that I'm kind of not all that happy with is that using this warp parameter increases the number of peaks so that even if this is one you're still going to have a lot of peaks if this is high um, and it probably shouldn't be set all that high. But, um, so those are the main uh, controls, um, scale and warp and that offset. You can change the modulation rates of all of these. Now I wanted the um, shape here to be variable, so 
by default it's kind of like that. It's um, This is a triangular function, but it's warped to be kind of more linear in decibels. But I added this threshold. Wait, that doesn't do what I thought. This kind of makes it more peaked, and you have more narrow peaks. I can turn that off. And there's also thresh, um, sorry, shape that makes it kind of more of a square-like function. So when this is set high, then this is basically just turning the different bins on and off. And this acts as a sort of uh, duty cycle. So that this should ideally have everything on. It doesn't really work that way. And as you increase this, these peaks get more and more narrow. Now, I don't have any modulation on those. I kind of figured you don't really want to modulate that. Um, these rates are variable. Um, and these, these are in hertz. So, if you set these to higher values, it gets really weird. Oh, and I also added some smoothing here, so... If you turn that, crank that up and make it less smooth over time, this is just a low-pass filter. Ah, where is that? It's right here. If you turn that filter frequency up, then it starts going kind of crazy. You can also adjust the frame size. That's too crazy. I find it doesn't really make that much difference, although smaller frame sizes have uh, sort of finer time resolution to coarser frequency resolution, and larger frame sizes, they're of course the opposite, they have lower time resolution, higher frequency resolution. Um, that's mainly only an issue if you want either one very fast modulation, like that. Or you want it to change very smoothly, you might want to use larger frame sizes. But you don't, in general, need to mess with that very much. The default is pretty much okay. This controls the random modulators. And basically, the random modulators are piecewise linear functions that are updated at random intervals over time. And this controls essentially the uh, number of events per second on average, the expected number of events per second that update the random modulators. And this min slope thing. Uh, can be used to turn it into a sort of LFO if you set it to 1 then it's a basically a triangle wave modulator um, the idea there is that 
if the piecewise linear function wants to make something with a very low uh, frequency, basically something where nothing is happening for a certain interval of time, and you don't want that to happen, you can use that here. This only affects the um, frequency domain filter random modulator parts, not the not the ones that affect the oscillators. And so that's pretty much it, really. Uh, I don't think these controls are really all that usable, but you can kind of fiddle with it and look at these uh, tables. They are right here in the FFT subpatch. This reverb part this is the reverb that I use on most things. I don't really feel like describing it. Um, so in general, frequency domain filtering is nice because what would be a convolution in time domain becomes a multiplication in frequency domain. Uh, you can see where I'm multiplying it here. And so that means that you can have a completely arbitrary frequency response with, for example here, any arbitrary number of peaks. And it's just as easy to implement. Um, I mean, you couldn't ever do anything like this in the analog domain. You can, of course, uh, use this filter to process any arbitrary audio. However, there's going to be latency that depends on the frame size, so if you're doing any kind of rhythmic composition or anything like that, you need to adjust everything else, delay it by an appropriate amount of samples to compensate for that. Uh, that makes frequency domain filtering kind of a pain sometimes. So that's pretty much it. That's the main, I think, the main interesting part of the patch. Um, the rest of it's kind of a mess. I'll see if I can maybe clean it up, but at the moment, uh, it doesn't run in real time on my computer. And also I'd need to upload the original uh, toilet recording that I used, which is a very large file. Um, I'll see if I can downsample that. This patch works just as well in both per data and um, uh, pure data vanilla. I modified it some. Um, originally I was using for these sawtooth oscillators the um, band limited ones like that. But those those are um, those are not available in vanilla. So I used these which I kind of it doesn't work that well but I just copied it from the um, demonstration patches. The rest of it's got several different parts. There's a um, lead part that uses a pitch follower through a sort of um, simulated tape delay. There's an arpeggio thing that uses, um, well, again, the same tape delay. There's the toilet recording, and I'm also messing up the toilet recording with a bunch of delay lines and pitch shifters and uh, another set of FFT filters. And that's pretty much it. And I got I got um, some other stuff in there for reverberation and things. I might look into publishing that later, but I'm not really sure. So I'm uploading this whole patch. You can use it if you want. I don't know that it's really all that usable or understandable, but I made at least kind of an effort. So that's it. Hope you enjoy it and maybe even find it useful.